one evening on a Tennessee highway, Sarah Swain suspects she is suddenly faced with both of these terrifying statistics as she and a friend spot an erratic driver. They're literally riding into lanes. And for Sarah, there's something about the way this particular vehicle is moving that sets off specific alarm bells. It was about six o'clock in the evening, so I was like, that's not somebody drunk driving. And watching further, it wasn't a texting and driving because it was so ongoing and so consistent. So I knew something was wrong. <laughs> Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You got that right? Yeah. After the close call, they follow the vehicle as it exits the highway. And when the car suddenly stops in the middle of the off ramp. No, no, no. leave him there. Though there's no way to be sure, Sarah believes the driver may be under the influence of something. So we need to call him. I'm just gonna call him. Yeah. Unfortunately, I do have addicts in my family, so the Overdose situation was not completely new to me, but while being on the road, that was a bit overwhelming. Sarah calls 911 as she walks to the stopped vehicle. Sarah, you need to be careful. By the time I approached the vehicle, he was already unconscious behind the wheel with the car still on. Initially, I think I was a little bit more angered and annoyed. As a single mother at the time, I. All I could think about was if my kids were in the car and we were on the way home from school or daycare or whatever, I couldn't imagine. Is there kids in the car? Is there kids in the car? Okay. There is a large bag in the car. I noticed a very large bag of powdered substance and a prescription pill bottle. Uh, early 20s. It was like a Ray, Honda, Honda. With the driver still seemingly unconscious, Sarah stays on the line with 911, hoping it's not too late. Please pass out three times now, sir. I'm scared that he's going to die. Can you please get an ambulance here? Suddenly, the driver regains consciousness. Hey. Hey. OK, he's breathing. Yeah. Get down. Yeah. He's out of it. I mean, he's breathing, but he is out of it. Like, he's not even registering what's going on right now. Like, he needs help. I was a tech at the hospital downtown Nashville for a little bit, um, about six months. So I did go through some training and knew a little bit about that. If he doesn't get Narcan, he's going to It's in his hand. Is it Narcan? No. No. No, he is not. Do you have Narcan in your car? Thanks to her training, Sarah knows that some drug users keep the opiate blocker Narcan on hand in the event of an overdose. Do you have Narcan in your glove compartment? Yeah. I think that I had a miraculous mixture of everything to handle what I was thrown into that day. No, check the center council. But be careful for weapons, needles. The search yields nothing, but fortunately. They're right here. Emergency services arrive moments later. After the police finally arrived and medics started helping him, I, I completely broke down. It's a lot to see someone in that state, whether it's a stranger or someone that you know. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. According to Sarah, the driver is taken to the hospital for treatment and ends up facing no charges. It looks like they're has to. And while her actions may have saved his life, okay. there is a large bag of car. Sarah remains humble about what she did that day. I don't think it's heroic at all. I think it's common human decency. He's still a human and deserves compassion. If I can stop and help in any way, why wouldn't I? I mean, he's breathing, but he is out of it. Like, he's not even registering what's going on right now. Road Wars has real life. Jaw-dropping moments captured by real drivers. Ah! Proving that anything can happen on the road.